Let's talk about how I think we have one thing from the PCA all wrong. Now, the other day, I posted a clip from a video from Annie Elise from the 10 to Life podcast. She had a friend that she knows very well, that she trusts, um, give her information that she got from a friend whose husband is in the, in the FBI and was involved in the investigation. Now, many of the things that Annie said in these sort of insider crime scene tips ended up being true, that there was blood on the on the sheath um, and that there was, excuse me, that there was DNA on the sheath, that the sheath was found under one of the victim's bodies. It commented on one of the victims, um, trigger warning, very graphic here, um, that one of the victims was stabbed 53 times and was beaten so badly they were unrecognizable. And we do know that one of the victims suffered overkill. So it stands to reason that if these, if three of these things so far appear to be accurate, at least we know the first two are pretty accurate. The third one, it's looking like it's accurate based on what Kaylee's dad shared in the 48 hours special a few weeks ago about how Kaylee was assaulted as well as attacked. So if if these three things are, are accurate-ish, then it stands to reason that this other line about what the surviving roommates saw is also accurate-ish. So I'm going to play this clip for you now. One of the cops said that one of the girls in the basement who survived went by the staircase and she thought it was Ethan and yelled at him to shut the fuck up, but it was actually the killer. The killer then left after he saw her, but she didn't know it was him, though, at the time. Now, the killer then left after he saw her. The only way that the roommate would know that the killer saw her or the only way that investigators would know that the killer saw her would be from investigating the roommate, obviously not the suspect. And the only way for the roommate to know that the killer saw her is if they made eye contact. Now, PCA said Dylan originally went to sleep on the second floor, which which implies that she ended up somewhere else. And we'll get to why that's relevant in a, in a couple of minutes. But she's on the second floor, right? And we know she opened her door three separate times. But they don't tell us what prompted her to open that door the third time. Let's go back to the PCA. DM stated she opened her door for the third time after she heard the crying and saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking towards her. The male walked past DM as she stood in a frozen shock phase. The male walked towards the back sliding glass door. Pay close attention to the fact that they don't say that the male walked past DM's room. They don't say that the male walked past DM's door. They say the male walked past DM. Now, if we go back to the part about the killer seeing the roommate and them needing to make eye contact for that to happen, we know Bethany was on the first floor and it would have been difficult for him to make eye contact with Bethany. It's possible that he could have been walking down here. He heard Bethany yell. He looked down. They made eye contact. Is it possible that when Dylan opened her door, she didn't just stand in the in the doorway or behind the door and open it just a little crack. Because remember, she's yelling if it's her. And we've heard from multiple people now that she yelled to be quiet. It even said it in that While Idaho Sleeps book. If it was her, she's probably not opening the door just a tiny crack, right? She's you you think about it, you're irritated, you get up. You kind of not even maybe fling open the door a little bit. You you open that door with some force because of what the PCA says and that it says it walked past DM. Is it possible that the roommate to go by the staircase was Dylan? Is it possible that DN came out of DM came out of her room to shout down the hallway, shut the fuck up, and ran right into the killer? Because for me, that would certainly better explain the frozen shock phase phrasing, right? Is it possible that she was coming out here, he was coming down the hallway, and he walked right past her and out? 
And that was that. And she thought, well, who would be coming out of this door or who would be coming out of this room? Because remember, Kaylee's mom confirmed that that bedroom door, he that it was closed when he left because they couldn't get in. Who would have been coming out of Xana's room? What male would have been coming out of Xana's room at 4.15 in the morning other than Ethan? So is it possible that Dylan wasn't behind her door the way we thought she was, that she wasn't still in her room? Because all it says in the PCA is she locked her door. It doesn't say she returned to her bedroom. Looking back at the PCA, the male walked towards the backsliding glass door. DM locked herself in her room after seeing the mail. It doesn't say she went back into her room. It doesn't say she closed her door. It just says she locked her door. Also, pay attention to this orange piece of wall decor. A number of pictures of the crime scene circulated where the crime scene technicians were gathered around that piece of wall decor, something, they found something in that location, it, it looks like, because they seemed pretty focused on that one spot. So right near the wall decor, right outside of Dylan's room. And for people saying, well, if he saw her, why wouldn't he kill her? And uh, because he was about to get caught and he didn't want to waste any more time there and risk getting caught. So he left. He was probably wearing something that covered his face other than his eyes and his eyebrows. So I'm thinking he was either exhausted, he didn't want to get caught or he left or he had something else in mind. This is from the first press conference after the murders. Or did it seem like any of the entries were left unlocked by any means? I'll add to the last part there just because it's at the front end of my uh, mind. We're not 100% sure if the door was unlocked, but there was no damage to anything and the door was still open um, when we got there. So if the sliding back door was open after the suspect left and it was 20 something degrees that night, that early morning, and we know that Dylan, that the PCA states Dylan originally went to sleep on the second floor, which implies she ended up somewhere else. But in order to do that, she would have to leave her room. She would have to leave, right? Why didn't she notice that backsliding door was open? Or maybe it just didn't occur to her. Maybe there wasn't, maybe it, it wasn't chilly. I, I don't know. But it strikes me as odd that her room is right across from the kitchen and she wouldn't have noticed that that, black, that, that backsliding door was open. And I'm wondering if, she didn't notice it was open because it wasn't. I'm wondering if when he returned to the area in the morning, did he return with the intention of killing Dylan? Did he return with the intention of finding the sheath? Did he return? Did he go back in the house? Now, it's totally possible she just didn't notice the door was open. I could be overthinking this. But if she's not, is it possible that he came back to the house the next morning, went in, went to Dylan's room, saw that she wasn't there because she obviously must have moved to the first floor and then left? I mean, I would think they would have caught him on camera, We that we would have known that by now, but I don't know. What I think is, I don't think Dylan was in her bedroom peeking through a crack in the door anymore. You know, they've they've worded that PCA in such a way that it, it leads you to believe something that I don't know is true. I'm starting to think Dylan came out of her room to yell down the hallway to Ethan and Xana to keep the noise down. And I think she was probably walking towards the staircase and he was walking out of the room. And I I I think they like ran right into each other. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe it was Bethany that saw him. But the way it's worded and the frozen shock phase, it sounds, it's sounding and seeming more to me like Dylan came out of her room and, 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 and their paths collided. And that might explain the frozen shock phase of, oh, who is that? Like, 
or just, you know, running into somebody being startled, but also assuming, well, there's only one guy that comes out of Zana's room at 430 in the morning and that's Ethan. I don't know, but I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. So let me know. I'll be back soon. Bye.